Now to log in. You will receive four text messages with details on how to log in and a few tasks you have to do. Save this number as perfect job alert so you know that this is a message from us. On the very first message, you'll get your client ID, username and password. This is case sensitive. If you enter a wrong username and or password, it won't work. If you are sure that everything you have entered is correct and it is still not working, please call us. Field Worker app needs access to your phone's GPS and data connection. Please grant permission to that. Now that you have successfully logged in, it is time to check if your personal details are correct. On the main menu, please select My Profile. Now select My Details. Check if the information displayed here is correct and that nothing is missing. You can also upload a selfie so we can recognize you. Make changes if needed, leaving the field employee ID in blank and when you are finished, please press save and the arrow back to get back to the previous menu. Back on my profile menu, please select request new competencies. Here we need you to upload your Australian visa if you are not a citizen, driver's license, white card and any other construction ticket you may have. To do so, click on Select Competency and a drop-down list will show allowing you to select the document you are about to upload. Some competencies will require you to inform their expiry date or issue date. If that happens, a red asterisk will be shown next to that field. If you need to write a comment, for example, your Australian visa status or the vehicles you are allowed to drive on an overseas license, you can use the comment box. Upload a nice and clear picture of the competency you are submitting and press save. Repeat these steps until you have uploaded all your construction tickets. If you can't find the document you are trying to upload on the list, please let us know. All competencies must be valid in New South Wales. If you would like to change your password, you can use the My Password option. Insert your current password first and then insert the new one twice. It must be at least six digits long and contain numbers and letters. If you forget your new password, we can reset it for you, changing it back to 123456. That is all for your profile. Just remember to always keep your details up to date. The more information we know about you, the more easily we can put you to work. When working for Perfect Group, you'll receive text messages from our job alert system letting you know where you'll be working the next day or night. When receiving these messages, please check them as soon as possible. Leave the text message open and go log into your Field Worker app. On the main menu, select Allocations. You'll find an orange allocation in there, meaning it is pending. After working a while with us, you might have several allocations in there, so if you get lost, you can change from confirmed to pending. If for any reason you have got a message and you can't find your allocation in there, call our office or your supervisor on the numbers displayed below. Now select the orange pending allocation which will be for the following day. On your allocation there will be a few rows of information which you must be aware of. Order ID, this is for the office use only. Second row, this is the starting day and time. Third row is the client's name. Fourth row is the project's name. The project name may sometimes be the address which you must attend. Sometimes it may not. The fifth row is the site address. With these details, go back to the text message you have. The information in the text message and allocation must match. If they don't, please call us immediately. If they do, go back to the allocation. Some addresses will come with a blue button that will redirect you to your GPS. Use this GPS service to ensure you are able to attend the site on time. Just under the address, there is your assigned task for that allocation. Below task, if you have any vehicles attached to you for that day, their description will be shown. Under vehicles, you will find a brief detail of today's tasks, showing you if this is a labour hire job or if it is one of our contract jobs. Contacts on site will usually be your site supervisor, but not always, as it may be the client's representative. Under contacts, sometimes you will have more detailed information on the job. This is the comments section. At the bottom of the screen, you will be able to identify if there will be anyone else from our company working with you that day by clicking on my team. After checking everything, 
If you can't work for any reason, you can decline the allocation. This will make the pending allocation disappear from your list. If you decline a job, please send us a text message to let us know that you won't be able to work. If you can and you want to work, please confirm. This will turn the orange pending allocation into green confirmed. Once you have confirmed a job, we expect you to be there on time with your PPE, timesheet and white card and whatever else is requested from you on the text message or allocations comments. When working for Perfect Group, we expect you to show up for work on time with your PPE to know what you are doing for the day and who is supervising you. To confirm this, you must complete a worksite arrival form. This works as a job check-in and ensures a safe working environment. As the name says, you do this form when you arrive at work every day and every time you are working for us. In the Field Worker app, go to the forms and look for the worksite arrival form. You must carefully read all the information shown here and familiarise yourself with it. In the first field, you will input the client you are working for today. As you start typing, a list of clients will show up. The more you type, the less clients will appear until you can select the one that you are working for. Now choose the project you are working on today. This could either be an address or a reference to the project name. You can find the client's name and project on your allocation for that day. Now you need to answer a few questions. Once again, read them carefully to answer each and every one truthfully. Question 1. Mark down the PPE that you have with you. Question 2. Confirm that you have the PPE and that you know how to use it. Question 3. Input the supervisor's name for the day. Question 4. Relates to toolbox talk and inductions. If you have been inducted on site, completed a toolbox talk and understand what you are doing for the day, tick yes. If none of that has happened, tick no. If it isn't your first day on site and you already know what to do, or if your supervisor is not there but you know exactly what to do, check the third box. Ask your supervisor to sign. However, if he or she doesn't want to, don't insist, mark the box at the bottom and submit this form. You can review the submitted form by clicking on My Form Results and selecting the site arrival form you just submitted. Our system takes a picture of your geolocation position when you have submitted the form. You can send yourself a copy of this form if you want to. Just input your email address and press Email Form Results. To get paid, you need to send your timesheets daily. To do so, after finishing your work, make sure you collect your site supervisor's signature on the paper timesheet and submit it using our app. In the Field Worker app, go to Allocations, select the corresponding allocation for the day, and scroll down until you see an Add Timesheet option and click on it. Make sure you have selected the correct allocation. On this screen, you'll identify the day of work followed by the time you worked. Leave the activity as work on site. Verify that the start time and finish time are exactly the same as your paper timesheet. If you had more than one task or activity that day, you can break it down by adding activities, but generally we do not use this. If you had a lunch or dinner break during work, please inform the amount of time both here and on your paper timesheet. If you didn't have any breaks, then leave it as no break on the app and the same on your paper timesheet. Traditionally, Lunch or dinner breaks are for 30 minutes. Add a picture of your timesheet. You must do this as soon as you finish work and your supervisor signs your timesheet by pressing either camera or photo library. We need the picture to be clear and the information on the timesheet to be legible containing the following. Your name, day and month, job address, client's name, starting time, finishing time, break time if any, total hours worked, brief description of what you have done today, and the site supervisor's name and signature. We strongly suggest that you send your timesheet straight away to avoid losing the paper and not getting paid for your work. Do not add any docket attachments, and if you want to send a copy of the timesheet to yourself, input your email. If you feel like sharing something about today's work, you can add comments on the box below. At the end, press submit and the timesheet is sent. Do this at the end of every working day for each individual corresponding allocation. On the main menu, you can click on timesheets to check out which days you have submitted and which days have been approved. 
White entries mean that you have submitted and it hasn't been approved yet. Green entries mean that you have submitted and it has been approved. We don't mind if you submit the same timesheet more than once as someone will be checking all of them. The important thing is, missing timesheets equals missing money on your payment. So please, don't forget to do this every day.